Welcome to Sometime 6. Today we're working with Unit 5. In Unit 5, there are 24 problems. Problem 5. 6 is a perfect number. Can you figure out why? Well, if you can, then find out the next greater perfect number. Now, first of all, you need to know what a perfect number is. Before you know what a perfect number is, you have to know what the factors of a number are. We're working with number six. What are the factors of number six? What numbers multiplied together make six? Well, you remember, we had 6 and 1, 3 and 2. So the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3 and 6. Now, if you add these factors together, but do not include the perfect number itself, you should get the same amount as the perfect number. So 1, 2, 3, add them together, make 6. So 6 is a perfect number. Let's try again. 8. What are the factors of 8? 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Now we can't add 8, so let's add 1, 2 and 4. What do we get? We get 7. So 8 is not a perfect number. Best of luck. Work it out and find out which is the next greater perfect number. Problem 12. Sally and Anna took a maths course that required a 70% grade on 12 tests to pass. In the first month, Sally averaged 60% on 10 tests. So she wasn't doing very well. While Anna averaged 50% on two tests. In the second month, Sally averaged 90% on her final two tests. While Anna averaged 80% on her last ten tests. So Anna got 50% on two tests and 80% on 10 tests. Sally got 60% on 10 tests and 90% on 2 tests. So who passed and who failed? And what were their final grades? Well, let's work this out together. Sally got 60% on 10 tests, that's 10 times 60, and 90% on 2 tests, that's 180. So if you add 600 and 180, you get 780 on all 12 tests. 780 over 12. Now Anna, she got 50% on 2 tests. That's 100. And 80% on 10 tests. That's 800. So 800 plus 100 is 900 over 12. So Sally got 780 over 12, which is equal to, well, you work out the percentage. And Anna got 900 over 12. You work out the percentage. And you'll see which one passed. Which one